I'm building a torsion box, which is this thing that has a honeycomb grid made of uh, plywood between two skins. And the basic idea is that if you build it flat, it will stay flat because it's really rigid. There are lots of videos on YouTube about how to build a torsion box, but most of them build the ribs with one direction, the ribs are full length, and in the other direction, the ribs are composed of lots and lots of little pieces. The other way of building that grid is to use half lap joints and have all the ribs be full length. The nice thing about cutting the ribs with half lap joints like that is that once they're all cut, assembly is much faster than putting together lots and lots of little short pieces. But in practice, cutting those half lap joints can be tedious or tricky. One of the big name YouTube channels, Andy Rawls, has a video where he built an enormous torsion box and he used half lap joints for the ribs in his design, but he cut all those half lap joints of the grid using a CNC machine that looked like it might cost more than all the stuff in my shop combined. So his video is really cool, but in my case, not very practical. What I'm looking for is a practical way to cut those half lap joints. Conceptually speaking, cutting these isn't very difficult. The usual approach is to put all of the ribs together and make a gang cut, which uh, works out to be essentially a, a dado, although I don't know if that's exactly the proper term in this case. So I'm thinking of it as a trench. And yes, I'm picturing a trench like the Death Star with Luke flying down it. But the basic idea here is that when I put all my rib boards together, I've kind of marked out where I want my trenches to go. And if I had a way of cutting this dado, then all of everything would turn out the way I want it. Now in practice, cutting this dado is a little tricky. Normally when I say dado, I would just use a dado stack on the table saw which would be fine for the length of ribs that I have here, which are about 800 millimeters. But when I say I'm building a torsion box, I, what I'm building is the practice torsion box. I want to try and find a technique that would work even if these ribs were really long, like eight feet long. And cross-cutting an eight-foot board on the table saw is approaching awkwardness. The longer the board is, the more motivated I am to find a way to use a tool where the blade moves instead of the workpiece. So when I start thinking about cutting a dado without a dado stack on the table saw, I start thinking about using a router. But in this case, I need these trenches to be, well, about 37 millimeters deep. And that's getting pretty aggressive for a router. I mean, I could do it, but it's going to take quite a few shallow passes. And as long as I'm making a bunch of shallow passes, now I'm wondering, can I do this with a track saw? My torsion box ribs are 12 millimeter plywood, which means I need my trench to be 12 millimeters wide. My track saw blade is 1.8 millimeters in kerf. So I'm talking about around seven passes, I ought to be able to get that trench cut nicely. So let's try this and see how it works out. These ribs are 73 millimeters wide, and I've cut myself a set of 73 millimeter support boards so that I have plenty of support under the uh, guide rail. I've got the guide rail bracket for my dashboard set up at uh, approximately its full height. Its uh, capacity is said to be 74 millimeters. I cut uh, these web pieces to 73. I'm holding my gang of boards together with three clamps so that at any given time I can take off one and still have two left because this one here is going to be in the way of the, uh, the guide rail. The exact positioning of these trenches isn't really very important. So I'm actually just going to use the uh, rough pencil lines and then I'm gonna set a stop. So the way I have this set up right now, if I do this cut, the kerf will happen inside the trench. What I'd like to be able to do is set another stop at this end so that I know how far I can slide the board while I'm making my multiple passes. So I'm gonna take a piece of the same material as a spacer and I'm gonna set the second stop here 
like this. So now I can slide this board down to this stop and I should end up with a trench the same width as this board. However, things don't work out exactly uh, as I just described because with both stops set now, if I were to slide this board down, the pencil line for the other side of the trench is now pretty close to right under the splinter guard, which means that the cut is going to happen outside where I want the trench to be. I don't actually want that spacer to be the full width of the trench. I want it to be the full width of the trench minus the width of the kerf of my saw blade. So back over here at the other end, I want this stop to actually be 1.8 millimeters further in this direction. So as a trick to do that, I'm gonna slide my workpiece back down and I'm gonna take this part of the rip gauge and use it as a spacer and I'm gonna slide it back to the stop. Now take the rip gauge away and this is where I want the stop to be. So I'm gonna loosen the stop and move it back. So now I'm back over here by the cut line and I have the workpiece up against this stop. And because of the way the other stop is set, now if I slide the workpiece down as far as it will go, I'm short of the cut line. So I should now have the two stops configured such that they're the boundaries of the trench I want to cut. Okay, let's see how this works out. I'm gonna cut one side of the trench and then I'm gonna push the board to the other stop and cut the other side. So the two walls of my trench are done. Now I just need to make a bunch of passes in the middle to remove the other parts. So I can't say that the bottom came out completely clean, but generally pretty good. These trenches are not true dados. They're not fine joinery. They're just a way for one rib to be out of the way of the rib going in the perpendicular direction. So after cleaning a little bit of the debris out of the uh, trench, which didn't even require a chisel or anything, the real test is whether the width of this trench is an appropriate fit for uh, the material that we're uh, working with. And I I'm just gonna use the same spacer I used earlier and drop it into place. And I think it looks like a pretty good fit. I have eight ribs here and I want four going in each direction. And my practice torsion box here is intended to be square. So all of the ribs are gonna be the same. So I've cut one trench, I just need to cut three more. As I said earlier, the position of these ribs isn't really very important in terms of accuracy. So I'm going to cut the other end now because the same stops should work regardless of whether they line up with my approximate pencil marks or not i'm just going to flip the workpiece around and do the other end's trench okay so now i have one trench at each end for this one, I did more passes by moving the boards a little bit less each time, and I ended up with a bit of a cleaner uh, bottom to the trench. Now I just need to cut the two middle trenches, which means I'm gonna need to reset the stops, but the stops should be the same for both of them, so I only have to do it once. Same procedure again, I've got the workpiece placed so that this side of the trench is directly under the splinter guard and I'm gonna set this stop. Here at the other end, I have again set this stop temporarily using the full width of a spacer. And I borrow the kerf plate from the rip gauge once again to move this stop slightly back in the other direction. So I have all four of my trenches cut. I can uh, slide my 
scrap piece in all four of the trenches pretty uh, well. So it's time to take this gang apart and see if I can assemble the grid. So I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. I have the grid of ribs for a torsion box. All of the pieces are full length. It went together very easily and uh, the cuts in my mind went pretty well compared to the other possible ways of doing it. And as I said, I think the technique for cutting the uh, trenches in those ribs would work the same even if these ribs were eight feet long. So I should be able to use the same basic technique for building a really large torsion box as well. For this video, I'm not going to go ahead and assemble the torsion box with its skins. That's a whole nother task for another day.